Welcome back to the Tweaking Tools series. This is episode 6, and today we're digging into something most players don't realize actually changes how their entire system behaves. Your game's rendering API, DX11, DX12, or Vulkan. If you've ever switched APIs in a game and wondered why one feels smoother, but another gives higher FPS, this video will show you why, and how to tune Windows and your GPU driver for each API separately. This isn't about magic FPS boosts. It's about frame time consistency, input latency, and understanding how each API interacts with your hardware and system scheduler. We'll be mixing in registry edits, NVIDIA control panel twigs, and a few lightweight commands, all safe, all reversible, and all focused on real responsiveness, not placebo. All right, let's get started. Step one, understanding how APIs differ. Before tweaking, let's make sense of what we're actually dealing with. Each graphics API, DX11, DX12, and Vulkan, communicates with your hardware differently. DX11 is CPU-driven. It handles most of the game logic and draw calls through the CPU. It's reliable and well-supported, but can bottleneck on modern systems. DX12 is low-level. It gives the game more direct control over your hardware, reducing CPU overhead. But it also depends heavily on how well the game's coded. Bad implementations can cause stutters or driver timeouts. Vulkan is the most balanced of the three. It's efficient like DX12, but more consistent and often better optimized across AMD and NVIDIA. The goal here isn't to pick the best one, it's to make each one perform smoothly by aligning driver settings, scheduler behavior, and cache management to match how that API handles workloads. Step 2. Registry Level API Cache Optimization Windows stores shader caches and pipeline data for DirectX and Vulkan separately. Sometimes these caches get corrupted or bloated, especially after driver updates, leading to hitching or micro stutter. Let's clean and reconfigure them safely. Step 2.1 Clear old shader caches. Open command prompt as administrator and run WPR-cancel. Restart your PC after this step. Windows and your GPU driver will rebuild new, clean caches the next time you launch a game. Step 2.2. Registry Cache Behavior, Optional Performance Tuning. Open the registry editor by pressing Win plus R, typing RegEdit, and hitting Enter. Once it's open, navigate to the following path. If the Direct3D key doesn't already exist, right-click the Microsoft folder, choose New, Key, and name it Direct3D. This will make sure the tweaks apply correctly. Now, inside that key, create or modify these D-word 32-bit values. Shader Cache 1 enables persistent shader caching, so shaders stay stored instead of being rebuilt every time. Shader cache size, 0x4000000, sets a 1 gigabyte cache limit, giving DirectX enough space to keep compiled shaders for faster reuse. Shader defrag 1 activates periodic cache defragmenting, keeping the cache clean and efficient over time. If you decide you don't want these settings anymore, you can easily revert by setting all three values back to zero or deleting them entirely. This small adjustment helps DirectX manage and rebuild shader data more efficiently, which can noticeably reduce stutters during the first load of games or applications. It's an optional tweak, but if you're after smoother performance and faster shader compilation, it's definitely worth trying out. Step 3. NVIDIA Control Panel Settings by API Type Now let's fine-tune your NVIDIA Control Panel and Profile Inspector settings based on the graphics API your games mainly use. Different APIs handle rendering and latency in unique ways, so these tweaks help you get the best performance and smoothness from each. For DX11 games, Threaded Optimization to On, Low Latency Mode to Ultra, Power Management Mode to Prefer Maximum Performance, Maximum Pre-Rendered Frames to One, Shader Cache to On, Driver Default, Text your filtering quality to high performance. 
These settings help reduce CPU queuing and input delay, improving responsiveness for DX11's heavier, CPU-driven threading model. Games using DX11 often benefit noticeably from these optimizations, especially on systems with strong GPUs. For DX12 games, low latency mode to off, DX12 already manages frame queuing internally. Shader cache to on, power management mode to normal or optimal, anisotropic optimization to on, triple buffering to off. Since DX12 handles command queues and latency control natively, forcing driver level low latency can actually introduce instability or uneven frame pacing. These settings keep performance consistent without interfering with DX12's built-in scheduling. For Vulkan games, threaded optimization to auto, power management mode to prefer maximum performance, shader cache to on, texture filtering quality to high performance, anti-aliasing transparency to off. Vulkan is already optimized for multi-threading and low overhead. Here, we just focus on maintaining stable driver behavior and maximum GPU clocks for consistent frame times. Once you've adjusted everything, click Apply in the control panel to confirm your changes. These small tweaks ensure each API performs at its best, helping your games run smoother and respond faster overall. Step 4. CMD plus Scheduler Tweaks per API Different graphics APIs interact with Windows System Timer and Task Scheduler in slightly different ways. These quick command line tweaks help sync CPU timing with GPU workloads more effectively, leading to smoother frame pacing and fewer micro stutters, especially in CPU heavy or latency sensitive titles. Open Command Prompt Admin and run the following commands one at a time to test the changes. Set higher timer precision and sync policy. Once done, restart your PC to apply the settings fully. These changes are most noticeable in DirectX 11 titles, where the CPU handles more draw calls and timing consistency can impact performance. By forcing Windows to use the platform clock and enhanced sync policy, you ensure more stable CPU timing under heavy load. To revert, run these commands and reboot again to return to default system behavior. Optional Vulkan specific tweak, disable background validation layers. This temporarily disables unnecessary Vulkan validation layers that can cause background logging or slight overhead during gameplay. It's a small but sometimes effective optimization for Vulkan-based games. Step 5. Validation, Testing, and Comparison Now the fun part. Testing each API to feel the difference. Pick one game that supports all three APIs. For example, Rainbow Six Siege, Horizon Zero Dawn, or Doom Eternal for DX12 and Vulkan. Launch it in DX11 first then DX12, then Vulkan. Record frame times with CapFrame X or MSI Afterburner. Focus on 1% lows and input latency, not average FPS. Notice which one feels more consistent, not just faster. DX11 should now feel snappier on CPU-bound systems. DX12 should feel smoother with fewer hit spikes. Vulkan should feel most balanced overall. If something feels worse, revert the specific registry tweak or control panel change. Everything in this guide can be undone easily. And that's it. You've just learned how to tune your system for each rendering API instead of treating them all the same. This kind of optimization doesn't get talked about much, but it's where you find real improvements smoother frame times, lower latency, and consistent performance across every game engine. In the next Tweaking Tools episode, we're going to combine these API tweaks with GPU scheduler tuning and interrupt balancing, basically teaching Windows how to talk to your graphics card properly. 
If you've been following since episode 1, your setup is starting to look more like a real low-latency build than a normal gaming PC.